It's been a while since the last time I talked about Shield Hero, and because the new season is only a month and a half away, I figured now would be a good time to give you some updates. If you haven't seen already, not only did we get a new visual highlighting the main cast of the upcoming arc, but we were also given a new trailer showing us quite a bit of what to expect. So, if we start with the visual, it's pretty obvious that we have Raftalia, Philo, and Naofumi, but it's the next two that you might not be so familiar with. As we saw in the first visual released over a year ago, the pink-haired waifu is a Melromark knight named Declare, and the other is a fairly important character in the Spirit Turtle arc. Then with Rishia being the last on the left, that's pretty much the recurring cast that you can expect for now. Of course, the other heroes and the queen will play their roles as well, but for now these are your most important. Now, as for what we saw in the trailer, it seems that most of the season will focus on the Spirit Turtle arc a part of the series that many novel readers don't consider to be their favorite, but perhaps can be translated better into an anime due to the supposedly exhaustingly long fights that await us. Yeah, apparently the main complaint many of the readers had with this was that there was simply too much action and not enough story. That said, there is still quite a bit left to the rebuilding arc that we started at the end of last season, but I doubt we'll end up finishing it since that one actually takes place a couple arcs ahead of this one. We'll definitely see elements of it towards the beginning, but the whole plot revolving around Raftalia's village being restored isn't something we'll see to completion until probably next season. Now, if we take a closer look at some of the scenes, the first thing we see is now Fumi having been declared the leader of the village, along with the efforts of everyone else to help restore it. The next is the reveal of the Spirit Turtle's resurrection, which is set by the Queen to bring calamity every time it's revived. So, not only does now Fumi have to worry about the waves, but there's also this giant kaiju which they have to try and stop as well. It's not the most innovative thing we've ever seen, but it does present an enemy the four heroes can't simply defeat with just basic power-ups. In any case, I'm sure I'm not the only one who's noticed how much cleaner the animation looks. I'm not sure if it has to do with the helping hand of Studio DR Movie, but they are listed as one of the studios along with Kinema Citrus. They're a group that wasn't present in the production of the first season. But if you're wondering why you haven't heard of them before, well, that's because their previous works aren't entirely notable. I believe this will actually be their first non-mobile game seasonal anime, so perhaps they'll be able to deliver when it comes to the animation. Now, they did also change the person in charge of directing, but fortunately they kept Kevin Penkin for the OSTs. So even if this arc does somehow begin to struggle due to pacing issues, at the very least we know we'll be getting a banger of a soundtrack. When it comes to how many episodes this season will be, Unfortunately, we don't have any word yet, but as soon as I do know, I'll be sure to let you guys know under the community tab. Now, in terms of other news, we were finally given confirmation as to what that special Mushoku Tensei episode is going to be about. Unlike other shows where OVAs are more just like filler side stories, you can leave it to Mushoku Tensei to use it to cover what they missed. A whole series of chapters from all the way back in episode 16, which was during the time when Rudy was finding out about his father. As you may recall, Everest had said that she was going to do a bit of adventuring, and I had mentioned in a cut content before that Verijerd was meeting up with a friend. What I didn't get to though was the very lengthy interlude chapter which covered Eris' goblin slaying adventure. A seemingly easy quest that spiraled into a slightly less easy encounter with new characters and assassins. It wasn't entirely crucial to the main plot at the time, but it was actually pretty important in developing Eris' growth as a character. It was this whole side story that was fairly central in helping Eris realize that perhaps she wasn't as powerless as she thought she was. So, despite it not making it into the anime, I am very excited to know that it is getting adapted. I think a lot of you will be pleasantly surprised not only with what it does for Eris' character, but also with what it'll do for the overall story. Now, there wasn't much else that I wanted to talk about, but I did see a few new anime announcements that may pique your interests. The first is the upcoming Netflix adaptation of Bastard a vintage manga from 1987 that combines both the elements of Dungeons & Dragons with heavy metal. It's a dark fantasy that was actually pretty popular back in the day. As for the others, we also have the upcoming Spring Isekai Trapped in a Dating Sim, another newly announced one called The Reincarnation of the Strongest Exorcist in Another World, then finally the reveal that the 2018 Isekai manga Black Summoner will be getting an adaptation as well. None of these are ones that I'm entirely familiar with, but the dating sim has the highest rating, the strongest exorcist looks like your basic power fantasy, and then Black Summoner is pretty much your cookie cutter isekai story. So those are the few that are announced to be coming out later. But yeah, that's pretty much everything that I've got for you. If you want to see more isekai content, then perhaps you may be interested in some of the Arifureta content I'm doing now. Aside from that, I am also planning to stream Elden Ring this week. 
So if you want to watch me die over and over, then feel free to follow me at twitch.tv slash news. I'll be streaming the game the moment it launches on Thursday night at midnight. But anyway, as always thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this type of anime content then you already know what to do. So until next time, ciao!